Hi everyone, this is Jim. Welcome to this Blitz Chess postmortem, a postmortem of my Blitz game number 445. My opponent uh, kicked off with c4, the English opening, and uh, well, I played my uh, one of my standard setups. I go knight f6, went uh, knight c3, and then I went c5. This is uh, symmetrical English when you put your um, c pawns opposite each other. It's a reasonable way to play. Um, and I play this with the idea of getting an early d5 in. The knight on f6 supports this d5 move, and it's uh, it's pretty hard for white to stop this. Now, d5 is not always the best move. In fact, you'll see the chess engine likes other moves like knight c6 or e6, and e6 is also the top choice in the database. Very reasonable move. Uh, preparing d5, I guess, and being able to take back with a pawn. But I, I like to throw in the move d5 immediately. This disrupts the plans. There's a... Uh, Someone I know at the chess club who plays the uh, white side of the English trying to get the Botvinnik set up. And when you get this d5 move in it, it uh, disrupts his plans for <laughs> playing the Botvinnik. So uh, anyway, so I've been experimenting with this way of playing. And uh, it turns out to be okay. Um, so he takes the pawn here, and I take back with the knight. And the knight can sit here for a while. It's under a little bit of pressure, but um, no immediate problem. And you'll see that we're still in a main line of opening theory here, reasonably reasonably well-trodden paths. Now I could continue developing with knight c6 or take the knight off immediately. Um, I decided to uh, play g6 here and go with this uh, fianchetto setup. Um, he goes bishop g2 and I continue with my plans here. And uh, he castles. And right here I decided to take off the knight. At some point it gets a little bit risky. He's going to take here. I take back with my queen and then he has a uh, some kind of discovered attack on the queen with the knight. I have to be careful about that. Um, although it turns out in this situation it's not an immediate problem, and I could go ahead and castle, which is the top choice of the uh, opening database and the chess engine as well. So castling is, is the move here. Anyway, I went ahead and took this knight off. He took back with the b pawn, and then I castle. And we're actually still in the opening book here. I guess we got here by a slightly different route. And normally... Uh, White would play d4 here, trying to uh, get a pawn in the center. A uh, reasonable way to play. He goes um, rook to b1. Okay, second choice here, but it makes sense putting pressure on my uh, b7 pawn there. Okay, I go knight c6 to shield it, and now he goes queen c2. And at this point, we really are outside the opening book. Uh, queen a4 is an interesting move in this setup. Um, also, it could have been played earlier when my king was still here. He can play queen a4 with check. And sometimes it's, it's a surprisingly good square for the queen. It can help control the fourth rank and can switch across to the other side of the board. So that's an interesting way for white to play in this situation. He goes queen c2. Okay, we're out of, we're out of the opening book. I go queen c7. Um, I want to hold on to the knight so that uh, if the bishop takes the knight, I can take back with the queen and not uh, disrupt my pawns over here. But a better move here would have been to go directly to uh, d7. And uh, we'll see why in a little bit. Um, queen a5 is an interesting idea here, too, it looks like. Queen a5 would prevent his queen from coming out to a4 and uh, maybe put my queen on a good square. Also, it says uh, I can get away with b6 immediately. I wasn't sure about that because uh, this knight is loose on c6 after I played b6. Okay, so I played queen c7. It's a little bit of an inaccuracy. He goes d3, opening up a line for his bishop. Uh, d4 would have been even more forceful. Yeah, d4 would have been a good move, because after d3, I could still prevent his plan. His plan is to uh, bring the bishop out to f4, and I could prevent that by playing e5 now. And if I'd been uh, alert, I would have played that idea. It uh, maybe looked a little bit funny at first, blocking in this bishop, but it keeps... Uh, Keeps my setup solid over here, and um, yeah, it's just a, a good equalizing move for black in this case. Um, instead, I played b6, which is what I'd been planning to play. Um, that was the point of the queen here, supporting the knight. So b6 is possible. There's no uh, discovery attacks on the knight because it's supported by the queen. And now he plays bishop f4, kicking my queen. And I really should just uh, move the queen away. So queen, queen d7 is the top choice here. Queen d7, bishop b7, and I'm still okay. And, but that's why um, this <laughs> this position makes it clear why I probably should have gone to d7 immediately. 
Um, there's no, you don't normally put your queen here because it blocks in the light squared bishop. But on the other hand, I'm planning to develop the bishop to the b7 square anyway. So temporarily blocking the bishop is not a, not a problem. Uh, anyway, instead I, uh, I did a quick calculation, which was completely incorrect, and decided I could play e5. And this uh, <laughs> shows the difference between uh, counting and calculating. You know, I just counted here. I said I have three pieces, a queen and two, uh, the knight. The queen, the knight, and the bishop are all supporting e5, and he only has two pieces attacking it, the knight and the bishop. Uh, but that's uh, just a counting exercise. There's, there's a, a deeper calculation here that needs to be made. Um, and uh, after, so the move e5 here is just a blunder. If you didn't see the game, you might want to pause and consider what's wrong with uh, e5. Calculate that move. Okay, it turns out he can just take it with the knight. Because after the knight's out of the way, there's a pin on my knight. If I take back with the knight, I lose the rook in the corner. And this rook isn't even uh, defended, so it's not like I'm losing the exchange. I'm losing a whole rook there. So um, anyway, the best response for me at this point is to just take his knight with the bishop, getting rid of this uh, threat of um, <clears throat> there's a, a threat of a discovered attack on the queen. And then after he takes my bishop, I can take back and give up the knight. Um, I think uh, for some reason I thought I was down a piece at this point, but actually the material is even. He's just won a pawn. I, I can move my rook to b8. And um, we have uh, one bishop and two rooks and a queen on each side, and he's just uh, gained the e5 pawn. So white is better here, but uh, it's not quite uh, as overwhelming as what happened in the game. So I didn't calculate this part correctly either. So, so when I played e5, that's two mistakes in a row. I played e5, not calculating at all, but just counting. And then here, when I tried to calculate, uh, I got it wrong. I played bishop b7, defending my knight. And now he has some great discoveries with his knight. He can take here on g6, which is what he played in the game, attacking my uh, rook and my queen simultaneously. Um, he can also just take on um, c6, which is uh, a top choice. It's maybe even a little more accurate, because this comes out a whole piece ahead. Knight takes c6. Knight takes knight, and uh, the queen has to move. The queen's under attack. Queen goes to d7, and now the knight can just uh, retreat back to e5, hitting my queen again, by the way. And, uh, uh, okay, I have to take it off. And uh, let's see, he can take on b7 first, hitting my bishop. He takes, I take... And he takes, and what is this? He comes out a whole rook up in this line. <laughs> so that would have been even stronger than what he played. Although what he played is uh, the second choice of the engine, and it's, and it's quite good enough to win. Knight takes g6, attacks my queen, and attacks the rook in the corner. So I go queen d7. My queen had to go to that square anyway. I should have just moved it there. And now knight takes rook. Now I take back. And um, then he plays queen a4. So we can pause here. He's putting more pressure on the knight, but it turns out I can defend this. So I'm just down the exchange and two pawns, which is still a winning advantage for white, but it's not quite as overwhelming as being up a whole piece or a whole rook. Um, so this allows me some opportunity to play on. And my opponent, for some reason, got a little bit careless, maybe overconfident, having Having seen my play, <laughs> thought uh, it would be no trouble to finish it off. But, uh, well, I was awake now when I started uh, paying attention. Let's see. He brings his rook to e1. I really, a mysterious move. I don't know what this rook is doing here. If he wanted to push the pawn forward, uh, he could have just pushed it immediately. He didn't have to wait. Um, and uh, so I take on c3. He's left uh, this pawn undefended. So I grab it, get one of my pawns back. He plays bishop to e3, um, relocating his bishop, and uh, another mysterious move. I mean, I'm attacking his, uh, his rook here. So I go ahead and grab the exchange back, <laughs> and now I'm just down one pawn, plus he has the bishop pair. So still a winning advantage, but there was uh, two mistakes in a row from white. 
uh, giving up a pawn and then giving up the exchange for uh, for no reason that I could see. So, but still with an advantage, he should really buckle down here and try and figure out how to finish me off. Anyway, uh, I play queen to e6. Want to get out from this pin? I want to keep the material on. I don't want to trade things um, unless it's uh, unless I'm winning material. So he goes queen f4, bringing his queen over here. Maybe this was his idea, getting the bishop out of the way so the queen could come over and uh, deliver some checks to my king. But my king, you know, is not all that weak. There is an opening there, but um, but he doesn't have the pieces in place to really exploit it. I go. Uh, Knight a5, opening up this uh, bishop. I want to get rid of his light squared bishop. That's that's potentially a strong combination with his queen. Um, he throws in the check. I block. So he can force a bunch of exchanges here, and he does. He takes on b7. I take back. And um, then he could take my queen and then go into this endgame where he has an extra pawn and a bishop versus a knight. Um, probably a winning endgame, but... Um, the engine is not giving that as one of the choices. Let's let's take a look at that briefly. Queen takes, and say I take back with the f pawn. I guess it's about the same. F3. I guess it would be a long game, um, but uh, White should win this. He's got passed pawns here. Let's see. Maybe it'd be better for me to take back with the uh, h pawn, just so I I have. Uh, these two pawns here can try and uh, restrict these four rows so uh, he doesn't have any easily passed pawns. Still f3. These pawns are coming forward. He's going to be able to create a passed pawn over here on the king side. But um, maybe I can get some counterplay on the queen side. Anyway, yeah, it's not as clear. So he keeps the queen on here. Um, goes to e7, attacks my uh, knight. I go queen to c6, defending the knight. And uh, I'm glad that I've gotten rid of this light squared bishop. I have some squares for my pieces. Uh, bishop to g5, trying to close in around my king. It's, it's nice that my queen is controlling the uh, h6 square. Otherwise, bishop here would be very dangerous, threatening threatening various mating ideas. Um, okay, pushes on with a5. Oh, he played bishop g5. It's my turn. I push on with a5. I want to move the knight away, and I don't want to uh, lose that pawn. He goes uh, d4 here. So I take it. His idea was to open up a file for his rook. But now I can block with the knight. And so uh, he's still winning, or still has the advantage here, but he hasn't really made any progress. He's sort of just let me stay in the game and hang around. Um, he tries, let's see, He I did knight c5. He plays bishop to f6. Okay, so now he's getting the idea. He needs to... Uh, um, defend the bishop here, but maybe he can bring his queen around this way now and, and mate me. <laughs> Something like that. He needs to hold on to the bishop, but he's starting to set up some mating ideas. But um, this was actually a big mistake. Yeah, right here. So before that move, he still has an edge, and he needs to play something like queen e5. The queen is just in a bit of an awkward spot here. So queen to e5, and maybe then bishop here, queen there, trying to set up the mating idea. So he goes directly for this mating idea, but the queen here, the bishop is under attack, and the queen is a bit exposed, and I can play the move rook e8, chasing his queen away. And actually, the tables have suddenly turned, and I am uh, winning this game because there's no there's nowhere for his queen to go. That also defends the bishop. He should play queen a7. That's the top choice, and just give up the bishop. Instead, he tries a, a different idea here. I think he's hoping to get some complications going. If I take with the queen, of course, I'll lose the rook. The queen is defending my rook, but I can uh, I can take with the pawn. And now his queen has to go to a7 anyway. And here I'm a whole rook up. He played uh, queen takes c5, and as I was thinking about what my next move was, I was wondering if it was safe for me to take here. Um, he uh, decided to resign. He has a whole rook down, and I should be able to convert this even if he does manage to uh, pick up a few pawns here. Um, but taking on e7 looks good. Actually, queen e5 is a top choice of the engine. Let's take a look at rook e7. I'm curious to see if I get uh, in trouble here. Yeah, yeah, that's a problem. <laughs> queen c8 check. King here. And then queen g4 check. 
picks up the rook. So I couldn't take there. Okay, hopefully I would have spotted that <laughs> before I played the move. <laughs> uh, so queen e5 is a good move here. Defends my pawns. Holds on to the uh, rook. And uh, there's no checks on my king. And uh, <clears throat> let's race that arrow. Defends that pawn. Holds on to my rook. And that would be the way to play it. Okay, but my opponent uh, saved me the trouble of finding that out and resigned here. So that's how the game ended. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Leave any comments you have in the section below, and I will see you again soon. Bye.